All right. Let's welcome in Zach Heilman. He's back. He he did not die. He did not disappear. He's still right. <laughs> I'm very much alive and among the living. I <laughs> swear I didn't bail on you for like several months to do other things that I had to do. Promise. Re- Pinky swear. I recall the messages were, Steve, shut up. I'm busy. I'm big time. You need to leave me alone and I'll come on. Is this man defaming me on this show? Am I going to have to pull a Johnny Depp? Am I going to have to go to court and talk about the horrors of recording shows with you? You're not going to get $15 million out of me. I'm just going to tell you that right now. It's not going to happen. It's all for it's all for the it's all for the ego trip. <laughs> it's all would be for the ego trip. I will buy you another big gulp, but that's about it. <laughs> you know what? I'd take that. I, that give me that, and I'm a sucker for gas station hot dogs. Give me two big bites with that as well. I, I can afford that. If you sue me, I'm going to offer that. I'm going to say, I'll buy that and, and a big gulp and some gummy bears, and we're done. Ooh, right, so. Okay. Got to be Albany's ones. I'll put it in there. Look, it's it's good to good to talk to you again, man. Like it, it All things aside, it's been too long. I, I've been owing you a show for a minute, so happy to be on again. Well, like we were talking, I, I couldn't even – I'm asking people to come on the podcast now because I have time. But even in June, my coaching schedule is over the place, like baseball. Right. Baseball, I thought I could. I tried it for a couple people. Like, I can do this day, this day, this day. And then we get canceled and it gets moved. I'm like, never mind. Like, I, I can't do it. So part of it was me too. Like, hey, I can only do this day. Well, that sucks, Steve. It's not going to happen. So, <laughs> but even in June, guess what? I'm still doing all three. Like, I, 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 more power to you, man. I mean, I, I don't know how you do three different sports coaching and then you're like, well, I'm going to record – shows on the constant rapid fire nature that you do it so i give you give you a lot of props that's why they're 20 minutes and i don't edit them it's 20 minutes and you know streaming your <laughs> streaming yard works 20 minutes i leave the studio i download the video i put it on youtube and then i take my audio thing out of my thing put it in the computer and upload it and i go to bed i'm like i don't Wait. care what it sounds like i don't care what it looks like i'm done over maybe maybe check it on once or twice after the fact but then you move on got more shows to do man chop chop <laughs> gotta start pounding them out there we gotta, we gotta produce the content man produce the content come on i was only doing like two i only get one or two in a week it was not no, enough. <laughs> there was no five anymore like doing it every day that wasn't happening because one there's nothing to talk about hardly well, there is, there is, but I don't have time and we'll get into what there is to talk about. But for me personally, there's no time to keep up. So like when the Nick Saban thing happened, I was like, yes, there is something to come oh, on here Jesus. and talk about. Uh, what else happened? Lane Kiffin. Like there's yeah. something to talk about. It's been a lot of SEC beef, uh, the typical basketball and hockey seasons going on right now. Well, you know. NBA sucks. So I don't care about that. I'm like, that's, that's, I don't care. I, I keep up with it. I know what's going on, but I'm like, again, I can't keep up. People are like, I have to watch this game. I'm like, oh, I'm not getting home till nine. So, like, Bears games. We all watch the Bears games. So I am capable of hopping on a podcast and talking about it. Oh, of course. I watch college football. I'm fully capable of hopping on and talking about it, whether it was a full game, I got part of it, whatever. NBA is not going to happen. It's just not going to happen because it's every day. Every day uh, you have to watch it. And guess what? NBA is soft. I could care less. Am I happy LeBron's out of the playoffs? Absolutely. It, I was only happy part of the whole thing was LeBron was not in the playoffs. But I can't keep up. It's soft. I can't, hand, I can't handle it. It's just, I just can't. I can't watch it. There's my mini rant. Look at you. Hey, you know what? You get to watch a, get to watch a young Celtics team if you even care at that point. They're going to take on what looks like a Golden State Warriors squad that's kind of turned back the clock three years. Yeah. Now, Without what I, a, Well, even farther than that, even. We're talking past Kevin Durant because I can't even – Oh, know. yeah, like right before he got there. Simon three. Simon three. It's like five. It's five maybe. Yeah. I've watched the Celtics a couple of times. Like I said, when the playoffs hit, I'll glance at games. Celtics look tough. They're a tough team. Warriors do look like a team before Kevin Durant. And guess what? It's a team that was built by draft picks and build it up. So, but yeah, no, this is not an NBA show. I could care less. Yeah. I think that, I think I can, I'm going to go with you on that. Let's uh, 
I'm going to back off. That's the farthest extent I got because obviously football, football's king, baby. You know it. Football is king. And speaking of football, I didn't even say your podcast. See, this is what happens. But this is, I told you, this is like Joe Rogan. We're just going to dive right on in. I even forgot the ticker, you see. Like, I even forgot all of that. Fancy. Again, I don't care what it looks like. I probably should, but I don't. Uh, I just don't. Um, I'm already seeing your your questions you're going to be asking me here. I won't even ask those. That's the problem. I'll forget all. <laughs> you won't even ask, you're just going to make the ticker like, for your YouTube audience. You're going to be like, um, hopefully this gets around to it. I don't know. <laughs> this is probably what we're going to talk about today. I think if there's just a lot of information on the ticker, it's like, oh, my God, this looks like a lot that's going on. No. <laughs> well, hey, who knows? We'll, we'll get, I'm assuming we'll get to a few of those things and some extra stuff like we usually do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, you're, you're a busy guy. Uh, I know you got two main podcasts instead of six, like the last time. Last time there was like eight of them. I don't even yeah. know. But Yeesh. But you do have your USFL podcast and Inside the Walls podcast. USFL, obviously, spring football. Inside the Walls is for arena football, which when you were on Kelsey's and them the other night and you were talking about it, I was like, where's my PlayStation 2 with the arena football game? I was like, I, I need know. to find it. That, that game was awesome. Arena yeah, football is awesome. I still have my copy. Um, the second one, Road to Glory. I yes. have one at the house. It actually has a. Uh, oh my God. I'm going to. I'll pull him up the name because it's. He's one of the best fullbacks in arena history, or at least that era of arena football. Um, but it's a Chicago, Chicago Rush player. I'm going to knock myself here, but damn good game. Uh, that actually is the first thing that got me into the sport, you know, and then watching uh, its last season in 2019, you know, that's where I'm at now. You know, the AFL that is not the one I cover currently. Right, it's different, but they play a very similar, pretty much the same game at this point. Sands like one element, which are rebound nets. They don't have those, you know. It's a good oh, element really? to the game, by the way. It's real good. Yeah, rebound nets. You kick the ball off at the uh, opposite end of the goal of the your opponent's goal line. The idea is your kicker bounces it off the net. The return man has to be able to accurately follow the arc of the ball and where it bounces, track it, get it, and then turn. 180 degrees towards where you're supposed to run and get the hell downfield all in that span of one kickoff. They're, they're so chaotic. And there's a thing called a bar ball. You hit the ball onto the bottom bar of the net. The thing bounces like crazy. And so people go mad dashing for it or like cause a fumble real easy. They're the best things ever. Like the sport right now, they don't have them. They really could, should, if they have mm -hmm. a chance, because they're that it's so good. Just, just go. If you ever get a chance, look back at old arena footage. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You know, look up a rush game. Why not? Yeah. There was uh where I grew up in central Illinois, there was an arena football team there for like a hot minute, like for a year. And they had open tryouts. Cannot okay. for the life of me remember the team though. I don't know if it had been professional. I guess it was. But even then, like you got to walk in and watch people try out. Even that it was intense, but I loved it. I forgot about the netting. See, it's been a while. I yeah, I mean, that that's the main thing. And also, I just found it. Bob McMillan. Uh, that's fullback. it, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, Bob McMillan, who his last stint as a player, uh, he won a title with the – he won a title with the Rush. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's considered one of the – he's considered one of the all-time greats in terms of that position at running back for in arena football. So, um, yeah. He actually coached the Rush, funny enough, uh, 2010 to 2013 while I'm checking this. I'm still learning a lot of stuff on the fly. But like, yeah, the old the old one with the nets, you know, it's great stuff. Like I said, it, it, it causes chaos. I love chaoticness that arena brings. Didn't Kurt Warner play arena football? He did. Yeah, that was back in the nineties. Um, Iowa Barnstormers. That was his team. Uh, didn't win any championships, but he was uh, he was damn good at what he did there. It's, <laughs> it's the main reason that the Rams looked at him. Didn't uh, Matt Nagy also play arena football? He also did. <laughs> You're right. Um, played for the Columbus Destroyers back before the first bankruptcy. Speaking of the Rams, I found this. Where'd you get that? 
I was at the very last game for the St. Louis Rams, the very last game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers no. with James Winston, and this is from there. Really? Yes. That was one of the color rush games, right? Yeah, they were in this color rush. They they were in this oh gold or whatever. I was at the last game. I was like in. I was in the end zone, like five or six seats back. Wow. They, they had football coach I worked was coaching with. I was volunteering, and his whole thing was he wanted to do something for volunteers that weren't getting paid. So there was like four of us, and he's like, "Okay, a buddy of mine has season tickets. He's going to give them all to me. We're going." So he took us four and like two other people there. Went to the casino first, and you walked up and went in there. Yeah. I was cleaning something out, and I found this. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is from the last Rams game. Side note. That's crazy, though, man. I mean, can you – I cannot fathom the feeling around – I mean, that last home game, they're moving away. You know, I don't know. I mean – I feel like I'm now flopping over to being the host here, but like I gotta ask just because you bring it up. I mean, despair, dread. That was uh, a was that common themes that you were seeing, or uh, a little bit, but there was also there at the beginning. I'm trying to remember because this was like when was that? 2015, I think. Uh, that, yeah, 15. Because they uh, went to LA in 16. See, I can't remember what I did yesterday, so. But from what I can remember, it was a lot of excitement there. Like, I mean, it was packed. It was excitement. Um, and then at the end, it was like people were pissed off. But there was also some, ex like, celebration of the team. So, you're all right. It was a mixture. Like, at the beginning, it was all about, like, you know, they were excited and blah, blah, blah. And I think it was a shootout at one point. Jared Koff was thrown all over the place. Winston was thrown all over the place. Uh, and then it became, you know, they didn't want him to leave. And then as we were leaving, people are yelling like at, at the at the people at the building, like, why are they leaving? And at first I was like, don't yell at the building. Like, what the fuck is that going to do? But like they, they were doing that. And then uh, people are standing on the street, like cheering for the team and everything else. So like it was a mixture of both. Um, but it was a it was a shootout game, too. So it was it was fun. It was a fun game, even though. Right. So, but yeah, uh, I was, I don't think I was at the last game for Bush Stadium there, but I was at one of the final ones when I was a kid. Like uh, Bush one, not Bush two. I've never they... been, I've never been to the, the, the new Bush Stadium. Mm -hmm. I've been outside of it, never been there. But my friends that lived across the street, the dad's a huge, was a huge Cardinal fan. And so we went like, I think, I think it was the last series I was at a game. For the last years, I'm not a Cardinal fan, Cubs fan, but right. went, same, but, same here, same here. But went with them because, like, oh, pretty cool last series at Bush Stadium, cool. Um, so maybe I'm just supposed to be there to end St. Louis teams. I was around for the end of the St. Louis Cardinals Bush Stadium. I was there for the end of the Rams. So now I just need to go to a Blues game and get them out of St. Louis. That's my mission. Oh, but no. Yeah, that was a side. <laughs> but that was a side note when you brought the Rams. I was like, wait a minute, I found this last night. It was just last night. Uh, it was moving. It was actually hanging on my golf clubs because I wanted to try to golf for the first time, it was like 2018. So it was like oh, wow. hanging. It was hanging over them, and I was like, what is this? Oh, in the closet collecting dust. You know, uh, well, I'll tell you what. I almost this will make me want to say you. You should have seen a. If you had known about, or if you'd want, it, were interested in the XFL and were wanting to come that opening week in 2020, I'll tell you. Um, this is why I asked that question about the feelings for your evening, mm -hmm. because 2020 was a lot of we're excited to have a team. That anger towards prior towards ownership of the said Rams yep. now in Los Angeles at that time, very much adamant. I cannot see. I cannot tell you how loud. Uh, I hear you would hear well in that opening game, uh, like Cronky sucks, F Cronky. Mm -hmm. You got you got a uh, F Stan Cronky jerseys, custom made Battle Hawks ones. By the way, not like someone that taped over them. You know, the feelings against that organization were very adamant 
Uh, and I think, of course, a lot of the stuff in the years after 15 came out, of course, and, you know, people just knew they wanted out of town at that point. And so, and plus the lawsuit was just kind of kicking underway at that point as well. So like it just, everything had finally boiled over. But I find that fascinating. You know, you talk about like, remember the good times. And then like five years later, it's like, they took those good times from me. They stole it from me. You know, we got our team now. And I mean, they still are trying to come back. Hell, I'm wearing shirt right now. I love that team. So oh, it was a fun team. But yeah, I was hearing all that at the end. People are standing out yelling all of that. Like if, if, if to the owners, if to the manager. But then you had people like cheering and like people were crying and people were like, this is our team, blah, 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 blah. And a part of me was like, is this at the time I'm like, oh, this is crazy. We'll never be a part of that. And I was like, are people going to be like that when the Bears move to Arlington? Are people like, no, don't take our team, even though it's a half hour. <laughs> it's not going to. <laughs> I feel, like we're so di- I feel like we're so distracted and there hasn't been much new with that that I can tell that, you know, I, I, plus, I mean, Arlington Heights, like, at this point, I'm, last time I talked to you about this, I was like, I still would lo- I still wish they were on the lakefront and I will fight for that. But, like, more and more, I'm like, look, it is what it is. It's modern NFL. Everyone's getting a stadium right now. The Bills just got a new deal that they approved. That's going to come in, I think, in two years. They're going to start that one up. So yeah, I'm true. trying to plan out when I can go out there so I can see New Era before it, you know, gets shut down because that's a stadium of old NFL era design. Yep. And I want to be part of that before it goes. And it's a good audience. It's Buffalo Bills, man. I've never you been know? there. Never been there. Uh, Nor have I. Nor have I. Um, side note, one place I want to go to is um, Fenway Park in Boston. Oh, yeah. Now, I've heard a lot of good stuff about going out there. My friend Logan, who hops on here to do my geek corner thing where we talk about just TV and stuff, he's there right now. Went there yesterday. Oh, okay. it. It's on his bucket list. And I was like, you son of a bitch. Like, yeah, yeah. It's on my bucket list. And he did it. And I'm like, you son of a <laughs> Because. It's rubbing well, a little in. No big deal. Red Sox <laughs> are another team that I kind of like because – being a Cubs fan, you hate the White Sox. So as a kid, you're like, I'm going to watch the Red Sox because they're not the White Sox because you're a kid. And you're like, it's the opposite. And I think for a while there, too, I mean, you know, at least up till four, the Red Sox were on one of the longest losing, one of the longest World Series droughts in the MLB, you know. Yep. So, I mean, that alone, I mean, talk about the sympathies. <laughs> that, that's a hand in hand type of thing to me. And well, they're historic man. franchises, historic ballparks. And then uh, they beat the Cardinals in World Series. So I was like, yep. Uh, that feels good. Like you even more. And I was living – what, they did it twice, right? When did they do that? No, it's 2011, okay. right? I'm, I'm going to double-check that for myself. I, uh, Like I said, I got to – I don't try – baseball is a little less my forte. I still, you know, like I said, give a cup with the Cubs. Historical knowledge, it lacks – <laughs> Blacks at times. Uh, let's see, twenty. I think it's twenty thirteen. You're referencing, yeah, twenty thirteen. Okay, because I was living with a Cardinal fan, and so when they were playing, I kept walking out with my Red Sox hat on. And then when they lost, he told me to get the f out, and I started laughing. <laughs> oh wow, it's funny. I mean, but anyway, man. anyway. Um. What was I going to ask? See, the good thing I have the ticker. Um, so your USFL podcast has just taken off from what I've heard. It's going. It's definitely going. <laughs> I had a blast with it. Um, Because you were just on high-low the other night, and I hopped on to listen for a little bit. And then, you know, I do sports. So, of course, I had to hop off for something. But I heard it's – is it like on their main website, I think? Is that what you were talking about with it? Oh, uh, that's a little – so that one's the my arena one you're talking about. Okay. For the website. Yeah, the USFL one, that – I mean, I would love it if it was the official show. I don't know. If, I mean, hypothetically, that would be incredible. Um, but yeah, I don't – that one is more – it's it's an independent from them, but it – I mean, we've gotten good praise from folks around the USFL, at least in terms of uh, those to help run it or those that are at Fox Sports. Um, you know, they've uh, I've gotten messages from those people uh, 
and it's going well. You know, I mean, we're having a blast with it. People enjoy it. Um, we're still figuring out a few things because, like, it's me and another partner of mine, uh, Stefan Raychuk. He goes by the ref as an alias. Um, but he also runs, like, besides the show, like, he does – he runs uh, USFL Newsroom, and that has to be a ton of articles a day, and he has to put those up, and then he's also on the side. He's doing web development in, near Houston, Texas, so, like, he's got a lot on his plate, you know? So, like, we, we're we still we're, – we're doing, like – we used to do, like, one show and then a bunch of clips, and now we're doing one show a week just because it's, it's hard to keep up and even do clips, you know, right now. Um. But it's good. Like we, we're enjoying. It. I love the. I, mean, I love the league right now. It's good football to me. Um. Side note with your clips. Clips. I tried to do myself. I. I'm an idiot. I don't understand technology. <laughs> I just go back and watch my podcast. I'm like, oh, this looks good. Oh, this looks good. And then I realize, like, oh, it's a six minute clip. Because I talk too much. Okay. But is that how you guys make clips? You just go back and take something from it, or do you just film something by itself? Yeah, so we usually will just go back in. So the way that the way we do it, and that I've understood to do it is, you know, like I think of like a, I know let's reference Joe Rogan here, you know, because we've done it. When we've been on here, you and I, we do it like seems like every other time we like joke about <laughs> like Joe Rogan. Someone comes up in a conversation. Um, like uh, he'll do it where you have the main show drops. And then if you have, it's just like highlights, like stuff that like, if you miss the show, here's what you were missing. So yeah. I mean, if you're talking like if it's six minutes and that segment was like six minutes or like it's an interview, take the six minutes out, maybe add it on like a custom front and back end type of thing, like an intro outro. That's a clip intro outro, but like say, you know, something like that. And then you post it up. And then what you do is you make like you make a playlist separate so you can go through the clips. Otherwise, you have the full episodes. And then we also do it where we'll record the whole episode like the day before, and then we'll do what's a premiere where you can start the show for its first time. Think of like a TV premiere of an episode on te- like just broadcast TV. And so you can basically like, here's the time it airs. You can jump on. It acts like a live stream, and you can comment what's going on during that first airing. And after that, it just becomes a video the entire time. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of stuff you can do, but the clips, those actually help a lot. Um, and plus it helps people get interested in your show. You know, if we're just talking general podcasting right now, that right. just helps people get interested because it's like, Hey, some people don't want to sit through two hours. We, ours are about an hour and a half long, but even some people are like hour and a half. It's kind of hard for me to commit that whole thing. So clips, a few minutes, maybe 15, you know, max or something like that. It's a very more watchable bite of your show and it makes them possibly interested to subscribe. Yeah, I try to do that. And one, I just don't have time Two, <laughs> as you've described <laughs> very much Two, I'm all over the place. So like if I had the structured, right, I'd be like, Oh, we're gonna talk about this, talk about this. And I would know exactly where to go back and find it. Now I guarantee you if I try to clip this, I'm going to go back and be like, oh, cool, we're talking about the USFL podcast. And then Steve starts talking about clips. And, and, about, you know. Yeah, and then this is going to happen. And so then it can't it becomes, can't do it. And then it's like, well, sh-. and then the problem is I want to put them on Twitter. But on Twitter, you can't upload unless it's two minutes. I know. I unless know. you do it on StreamYard. I figured that out. If you do StreamYard, then it puts, oh. figure that I out the that? other day. See that might make a lot of sense how you do how you can go about because I've always wondered there's com- there's companies that they'll I don't know if it's companies get Twitter to do a custom but there's a few of them like the NFL they'll post like five minutes I'm like how are you doing that right now I can't do that but you can do that why why does Twitter not just open that up Elon Musk might he might open it up <laughs> maybe maybe he does I don't know I don't know I think there's certain there's certain Twitter accounts that are allowed to do that I think. Because when you, because my last, not my last podcast one, but the one right before it, I did the other day, I talked about, can't remember the first thing I talked about, but the second thing I talked about was um, getting Mayor the transfer from Baylor to go to the U of I to play basketball. So my podcast was split in two. It was, we're going to talk about college football, and then we're going to talk about 
I think it was Jimbo Fisher. Like Jimbo Fisher just can't let this go with Nick Saban. Like he did, he said something oh, else. Sure. Was, he said something else. So I talked about that, and then I had the basketball one. So I said, you know what? People may not want to listen to me talk about Jimbo Fisher, but the Illinois one might. So I cut it, and so I had the whole episode. And then the thing about Brad Underwood and the U of I was 11 minutes. So I put that on YouTube. And I said, but I want this on Twitter, but I can't. And I said, well, what if I just click the video, put it on StreamYard, and it takes it to Twitter? Now, it's cool. It puts the whole thing on Twitter. But on Twitter, it shows it like a premiere episode. But regardless, it is still on Twitter. Right, because I imagine once the premiere is done, like that, that's just basically like the YouTube premieres. If you think of it that way, like that's all it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that Twitter, I imagine now, because you've done the, it's like a live stream. So basically, once it ends, now the whole thing's up there, you know. So I get If you I keep seeing that. me look down, see, this is another problem why I can't clip. If you keep seeing me looking down, my Zoom thing that I connect my stuff to, mm-hmm. I record, and I realize when I hit record on it, it said 16 minutes, but I was like, it doesn't mean 16 minutes or 16 hours. So apparently I have no more memory on my memory card. Apparently, even though I delete okay. it all every single time. So, so that's cool. You know, we recorded this whole thing and the audio is not here. It's cool. It's a cool time. Uh, are we restarting it then? No, you could pull the audio from the video. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay. I, I Anyway. <laughs> that's a new thing. Did I tell you that's another thing StreamYard does now is you can download the audio from it. Ah, uh, yes. I got it you is, now. It just sounds better coming off of the the card. But again, do I care? No, I'm going to upload the sum bitch and just let it roll. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Anyway, yeah. I'm taking. I'm, I'm taking. I'm not. No, 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 yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But nonetheless, like, if we're talking just like the show I'm doing, you know, and, and honestly, I wish I did this for the arena one. Um, you know, it definitely, it drives more interest. So like, but yeah, we, we do clips, we do interviews with players. Although again, I've been busy. So like, it's like hit or miss when I get interviews scheduled. Um, but we've done some good ones with like some starters, like a uh, linebacker, Terry Meyer from the Michigan Panthers. He was a really good interview. Actually, I met his dad at a opening week of the uh, USFL in week one. We were down in Birmingham for that. Right. Um, and because we did we did a live stream called Spring Stock for that pregame, everything, four hours, tons of guests. Uh, we're gonna do another one uh, for the championship in July called Summer Stock. That's a similar deal. We're gonna go to Canton, Ohio, where the USFL is playing its championship and playoffs. Oh. Um, July third, July second. I'm hoping I can do this, but otherwise, my co-host he's gonna help guide a uh, group of fans of our show that'll meet up, and we're gonna do it, and they're gonna do a tour of the Hall of Fame. That's I've been there. The Kent Hall of Fame, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Now, this was in high school. This was about 2007. But that's a cool thing. That's a cool experience. Yep. Last time I went, it was, I think, 09. Uh, that was during the – and the only reason I remember that was it was the AFL 50-year uh, anniversary, I believe. Yeah, it was the AFL's 50-year anniversary. Okay, yeah, yeah. When they were doing all the specialty refs, um, it was Bill's Titans who were playing as the Oilers back at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they were. That's the only reason I remember them. Remember it mainly was it was just uh, like I said, specialty year. You know, I <laughs> I'm kind of hoping when we get to the another AFL anniversary someday we get that again because I kind of want that back. Not gonna lie, I, I thought that was so cool. The re, like the red and white striped unis. You know, we uh-huh. got a lot of good customs that came out of that. Obviously, the the shell rule that now that that's gonna be changing next season. I'm excited for that. We're gonna get all that stuff coming back. Yeah, I can't wait for the Kelly Green. Uh, like Phillies or Philadelphia Eagles uniforms again, or his uniforms better be present. They have to be. There's no, if they, if they aren't there, that's a failure on the uh, Titans organization for holding those hostage. Oh, it won't happen on uh, Rabel's watch. It won't happen. No, I mean, they, they got to bring that one back, but yeah, like that was, uh, that was back when uniforms were awesome. And like the 50 year anniversary stuff was great for the AFL. So, yeah. you know, I, Hall of Fame is awesome. I, and for me, you know, if we're talking like alternative football. So in 09, you know, I don't remember very much looking at it like that. But like, you know, the XFL football and some of its gear was there. You have the original USFL stuff. Like there's a – I don't know if it's the same hanging up, but it was Jim Kelly's uh, Houston Gamblers jersey at the time. 
that's hanging up in there, I think is helmets. Yeah. Like a few other memorabilia pieces. Now you're going to get like that XFL 2020. Um, you're going to get USFL from previous. And then you're also going to get what should be the champion, the uh, first touchdown thrown football that's going to be there as well. That was taken to Canton after uh, opening night back in April. So, you know, for me, like all football stuff, you're going to see plenty more of that there. Now there's more leagues and everything like that. It won't be as big as the NFL things. No, but but it'll be cool. It'll be cool just to see that archive. Right. When I went there, it was just, it was 2008 because I was, that's when they had just put uh, Eli Manning stuff up there. They had just won the Super Bowl for New York Giants. So they put, who was the wide receiver? I always forget the receiver's name that caught on his helmet. What the hell? Oh, uh, David Tyree. They had his jersey there. They had the football there. They had all that there. They just got there. Um, but for you and your USFL podcast and all that, that would be really cool to see all that type of stuff put in. Mm-hmm. You should do a live podcast outside of it. Which should if be. we're if we could, I mean, man, we're still figuring some stuff out right now. It's uh, because as of today, it's going to be man, a little over five weeks, which, you know, seems like a decent amount of time, but we took several months long. We took like two plus months to prepare the spring version of that. So I'm already thinking about that, you know, but I mean, it's going to be fun. You know, and honestly, the league, like I said, it's been good play. Have you watched any of it so far? I don't know. If, I mean, you've been so, busy, so I don't know how much you've watched. Or, that's yeah. the that's the embarrassing part is you're a football coach, Steve. You should be watching this. And a part of me is like, but Sunday's my only day to myself. Right, right. Even, and it's not the NFL season, so you're I've glanced, like, I've glanced at it. I've glanced at it. I can't watch a full game. I have glanced at it because it, it is football. It is interesting. I was trying to figure out what team to be a fan of. Part of me wanted to be a fan of Michigan. Like I was like, oh, for some reason, they're calling out to me. Like, do I want to be, you know – a fan of them and like the Panthers and everything else. Like I had to think what they were. I was like, it's going to come to me. Hold on a second. Um, you have some NFL coaches, you have some ex college coaches and I'm like, Oh, this is pretty cool. Um, so I have glanced at it, but like, I feel your pain because for you, you have to watch all these games to yes. figure out this podcast. And I try to do that with college football and it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Bears, I- even Bears games are bad enough, but Bears, I get emotional, like fan attachment of like, we suck, we suck, and this is what's happening, and all that stuff. But I glance. Yeah, at see, it. like, see, like this year, you know, for the Bears ones, I mean, last year was like you and I were playing the pity party, like, oh, what was us? Here we go again. But like, I, so that's like the challenge. We, if when I hop on, hopefully later this year with you to talk, it's not just pity party. We can like do more analytical, you know. Uh, plus with new coaching. So, but, but nonetheless, like the, you bring up a good point, like watching, watching your favorite team versus like watching a league that maybe is new. You know, I, I love, I love football first. Right. Um, but like, if I'm going to pick a team, Chicago's my team. Like that's flat out. It's the one that if they're doing damn good, or if I'm getting frustrated more and more, I'm going to be vocal and like flamboyantly angry um, in person. So you know, I get I get flustered about that, um, but like with a new league, you know, the USFL or like even the XFL, you know, I have a favorite team. It's the Panthers, like you're saying, closest team. You know, mm-hmm. otherwise, if they get the Blitz, Chicago Blitz back, I'll cheer for the Chicago team. But anyway, you know, it's I root for that team slightly, but it's more about like, okay, what's the health of the league? Are things looking good financially? Are they getting viewership numbers in TV ratings every week. Do the games look good? Do people think the games look good? You know, there's a lot of stuff that as an NFL fan, you don't think about caring for or having to care about looking into as much because the NFL, it's been, oh, it's been over a hundred years. This is like a stable business. Right. You know, it's got, it's making more money as more exposure than it ever has right now. It's, it's arguably saturated to a Zenith in the U S where now they're worried about like looking for possibly expanding to international markets, mm-hmm. you know, other than the series. But like when we ser- when we're having people seriously talk about UK someday being an actual team, that's when you know we're we're kind of getting to like world push at that right. point. You know, whereas the USFL, it's like it's just a challenge to be like, okay, can it get through year one? 
can it have that stance to get through year one, keep an audience, mind you, and, you know, is it good football? There's a lot more to take into con- into content when you're watching stuff like this, you know? And so, like, for me, I enjoy the game, but I also am like, man, can I just get – because, like, the midweek when everyone's, like, complaining or talking about, like, ratings, talking about this, that, or the other – the midweek slog sucks with all football leagues, like spring football leagues. It's the worst. You just want to get to the next week of football to talk about that week or enjoy that week. Right. You know, it's a necessary evil, but I hate it all the same is my main complaint with it. You know, I would rather just be like, all right, week one was awesome. Can we just get to week two now? Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what, that's what the NFL is like, you know, I just care about week one. All right, the build up to week one, to week two. What's coming up to play? It's all the play elements. I'm not thinking about what the hell they're spending on players unless it's like off season or like, you know, the players or like it's Robert Quinn like two years ago when he, that first year of his contract, you're like, oh God, this is going to be a waste of me. Like something like that, you know? Right. Where it's like, you're, or Jimmy Graham, you know, like you only think about money because it's like, oh, these guys spent their money improperly, but don't worry. They'll, they'll bring the coffers back up. They make good revenues each year. This it's like, okay, you got base pay. Can they turn profit as a league and can they keep going as a league? And I don't like that, you know, mm-hmm. but that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a masochist for this stuff. Well, because I just want more football. Well, well then also how many times have we seen a different league pop up? And then it goes away. Now, oh, yeah. the old XFL before COVID, it had a chance. I think it had a real chance. It, it, but, it did. Sorry. Logo. Logo. Yeah. <laughs> it's a terrible camera shot. <laughs> it was so horrible. <laughs> was I thought so you were terrible. I thought maybe you would have been working out. So you're like, hold on a second. <laughs> no, dude, these these aren't ripped. This is uh, this is Pudge. <laughs> it's all Pudge. Hey, that's how I am. I can't lift no more with my back. But anyway, you bring a good point. I mean, you bring a point. Look, if you go if you go into Twitter and you hunt down the alt, the spring football scene, there's people like it's a group. It is right. a clustered, diehard group of people that love football beyond the NFL. That's the thing, you know. If you try and argue that XFL 2020 was a failure, well, five weeks in, it was doing pretty damn good, and. If it had more time and Vince McMahon wasn't losing money on WWE, we could be talking about something completely different right now. Right, because awesome. because I, people I remember we'll get to USFL, but I remember the XFL when they changed the rules on special teams. Or act like I loved they have to wait there until it's caught, then they can take off. That was it. Yeah, that's yeah. a new thing. Reporters on the sideline. Pat McAfee is on the sideline getting real time. Like people are like, oh my god, what is he going to say next? They're mic'd up. You can hear it. The Xbox controller for the replay, and we're not saying yes. this for 10 minutes. It was just cool. Like It was Vince McMahon written all over it, especially if you go watch him on the Pat McAfee show and they did that hour-long interview, and you really mm-hmm. learn about it. Like This has his fingerprints all over it. And then COVID hits, and you're right. He's more worried about the WWE because that's his baby. Mm-hmm. You're right. If COVID never hit, it might be huge right now. It was on its way. So I think that's right. The way you're thinking about it, is it going to stick around? But because as fan, you're the, you deep dive into it because you have a podcast. So you're like, we have to think about this stuff and talk about it. Right. As a fan that doesn't do that stuff, they look at it and go, "Oh, this is cool. It's a cool thing to watch." They're not thinking like, "Is it going to be back next year?" Because you're right. Think of it as a small business. Are we making money? Is it on TV? Do people on TV care about it? Then at the end of the year, when the season's over, that's what they're going to do. They're going to say, okay, maybe they didn't make money, but it, it wasn't an upward trajectory of like, okay, next year it should be bigger. What can we improve on? Right. And then then you got to think about USFL, and that's why I put on the, the, the ticker. What happens when XFL comes back with Dwayne Johnson? Like, yes. so as US, I don't think that I don't know if they're going to think that, but I'm thinking that I'm like, okay. <laughs> You do well this year, and you want to come back next year. But guess what else is coming? The XFL's coming. Mm-hmm. So are you going to be able to coincide with both? To have that's both? a big – I mean, that's the grand question right now is, you know, it's – spring football is a very ni- – it's niche. It is a niche – it is a niche area of the football market. 
You know, the NFL, I mean, you think football, it's the NFL. Or maybe college would be two, the right. number two option, I think. You know, some people would say one or the other. Personally, I don't know. It's, it depends on your taste, but I think the NFL slightly edges college in certain viewership metrics. So that's where I'm going to go with that. You know, but there's still these massive juggernauts in the room. You know, they, they right. suck up so much oxygen. And so the rest of it, like this, the little fragment, the diehard people that are like, well, what else can I watch? You know, they're looking for something else. And so it's like, okay, you can get one league. Now the big question is, can you get two? And that's hard. Now there are different times of the year. So that's, that's nice. You know, the XFL is going to do right at the same thing it did in 2020, right after the Super Bowl, next weekend, football's back on. Right. And you got the XFL kicking off. Whereas the USFL, their concept was, okay, we'll give people time, we'll let them settle in, we'll wait till it's warmer so they can come outside and watch at a game. I'll credit they're not at home stadiums yet, but that's the plan down the line. And then it's a summertime activity. That's their thing, you know. It, and, plus it, and then you bring in the TV viewership, you know, after a few people are away. So – these are competing strategies, you know, Fox who owns like the USFL, they're like more about cost saving right now, but they want to prove that it's a good football product on television before they go local. Whereas the XFLs, all their talk is we're going to local markets. We're doing the best of saving money with the best of the local exposure and getting on the ground floor. So you, you have to follow a lot of that and kind of keep up with, you know, how does each one play this game of chess better? You know, because mm -hmm. it's going to one's going to absorb or going to suffocate the other, I think. Um, in a perfect world, I wish I hope to God they both survive. I, I, I am I am that I am that crazy dude that every day I wish I could flip on. I could or every weekend I wish I could flip on a TV and a football game is on. You know, I'm that guy that people joke about watch K football. I'm like, K football is actually really damn good. You should give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And I'll get, you know, people will make, you know, at least uh, folks that make TV jokes about it, they'll make that. And I'm like, ah, you don't watch the game. It's pretty good. You know, I, or I guess uh, Pat, not Pat McAfee, where he's calling it, uh, he calls it state fair football. He's called it that on his show. I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. But nonetheless, you know, a lot of, a lot of competing heads going on. Talent. I argue there's plenty of talent you can find. Right. You can make good. You can make good football with the right coaches and the right and getting people recruited. It all comes then down to you know, if you have more options, who's going to go to the next best option? Who's the best people going to go to? You know, right. um, you know who eventually talks their way to being the best one, and what do the ratings say as well? You know, who's the best broadcast deal? There's a lot of stuff at play, man. You know, and I I think like the XFL brand people I think recept to it a little more because it's more mod it's more recent. Um but you know right now there's one playing football and it's been good football. There's uh it worries me, you know, because that's the the doomsday scenario coach is that both of them kill each other. Yeah. Off of their own accidental com competition. I, I don't think that happens. I think there's enough interest for at least one personally. I think the XML proved that. It's just that who has the better business model, you know, and who's going to be able to sustain interest or not tick off enough people to where they won't go away, you know, because at the end of the day, you're going to get diehard fans like myself, but you know, what the NFL has that these other leagues don't, they're cool. The casual fan, the casual person, the guy that sits at the water cooler, maybe he didn't watch over the weekend, but his buddies did. That's the guy that you want to bring in. Cause they're a fan because it's cool to other people that they're watching football, you know, right. not that it's a niche sport. It's a, it's a mainstream sport. That's right. the hardest challenge. Right. Uh, you said a lot there and I was thinking, and now I've lost some of it. This is what happens when you get COVID twice, I guess you get that COVID brain. <laughs> you got to slow down a little bit. My side note, I have a podcast out there, an episode. It was, the first time I had COVID, like day three, and I just look a hot mess. I've got the glass, I got glasses on, my hat's on, my friends are on there, and they could tell you could just tell I have like COVID brain. They're talking to me, and I'm just like processing it. <laughs> I just couldn't process it. Um, but but you bring up a lot of good points. Um, I didn't even think about the XFL happening right after the Super Bowl because really they could coincide, I think. If one starts right after the Super Bowl or a week after the Super or 
Super Bowl, wait a week, one of them starts. Couldn't one of them start around that time and then the other one feed into the summer? Because how great would that be to have NFL, Super Bowl, week or so off, maybe the USFL starts in because it's spring. Mm-hmm. Um, then you get the XFL into the summer. I think then they could coincide with each other because you're right. Coaches aren't a problem. Players aren't a problem. Because think of all the players in college that don't get drafted. Tons right. of them. Well, like the USFL right now, they're doing a lot of signings for next year, where, or at least it seems that way. We're like, you're seeing a lot of top like D3 and AI, mm-hmm. like D3 and AI. I think even there's some D2s. There's even some good like uh, Power Five guys that all of a sudden are getting picked up, you know, and it's, it's planning for next year. You know, I mean, these guys, they're gonna, that's a, what's crazy. You know, you're going to be seeing these leagues competing for talent and locking up people via contracts. So, well, you know, but there's a pattern you can follow if you do it right, you know? Well, cause that's the thing. Let's say you're in the NFL and you get cut, you know, during the playoffs or something like the playoffs happen, you're not on a team and they cut you. Could you realistically, since you're not on a contract, go play for a USFL or an XFL until the NFL signs you? Like, could you technically do that? And uh, well, I mean, the way with the USFL, here's the one I what I've got right now that I know is you can. There, they made a two year deal with players, and there was an opt out you could take on that ends on January 1st of next year. Where, well, if you say you're not opting into your second year. Once the new year rolls around, you're free to go, like completely. Um, so the new they made a new addendum recently that was discovered that it also is if you leave the league for the NFL, you and then you get cut by the NFL, your rights are only for the USFL. So that's where the competition comes in. So like, say you you go to the because you can't leave from the USFL to the XFL in the USFL or the CFL. You can only go from spring league USFL it is to the top league in in the country and the loophole was that if you get cut by the NFL there's nothing saying you can't just now go wherever you want so like you could do like a quick say you know some guys they'll spend like one or two weeks at camp or mm-hmm. they'll be like on reserve contract or something and they'll go and the team will go okay you're free to go we we got our look on you and then it's be like oh well I guess I'm a purely a free agent now so I can go wherever they add an addendum, and this is where competition comes in, that says if you get let go, your rights exclusively belong to us. You can't go to these other leagues. So basically, yeah, like in that sense, yeah, you can return right back to that team if they want you. Um, the, the fear, though, is they might lock you out. Say like that roster gets filled up, kind of gets stuck. But that's the nature of the beast right now. Now that you have two American leagues competing, and at the CFL, I mean – It's lesser that because of the whole ratio rules they have and all that. You can only have so many American players, but they're fighting for talent. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only thing. And, you know, the one that has the best talent at the end of the day generally is the one, as long as it'll make the best football in theory, it should be in practice really. And then that makes it the most viewed version of it. And this is all in a niche corner of it too. Like we're talking like, Man, I can't even – how do I even express this? If we're talking in viewership numbers of the NFL, it's like less than 10% for like a normal like Sunday top-tier game, you know? Like even the lowest NFL-viewed game this year, which was the Brown, Raiders-Browns, you know, how that, there was a stat out there that was the – it beat out uh, the NBA Finals best-viewed game last year. Um, even that, like it was like 5.65 million people. Like the USFL, it's max broadcast. If you count the simulcast for the beginning of week one was 3 million. So we're talking a niche, like a right. true niche. So that's what we're fighting over right now. Like a 10% like crumb of the marketplace. Right. I mean, NFL probably hates it, but probably likes it at the same time because – let me rephrase this. Coaches love it. Coaches, right. absolutely yes, coaches love, love this stuff. Yes. They love this stuff. Absolutely. Executives are like, you're not taking viewership away from us because we're not on at the same time. But see, here's what I always wanted to know. Why didn't the NFL just start its own little thing? You think that would be smart? You would think. Um, 
best I can tell you is uh, you just look back at NFL Europe, which was mm. their version. Problem is, and we you see how the NFL is doing their international exposure now. NFL Europe was supposed to be that plus a minor league system, which means that you're spending gobs of money to play overseas. Um, and then you're also <laughs> trying to get more people involved and want to enjoy the NFL teams that these players play for. And it just didn't work out like the NFL. And I know every business wants to turn a profit, but the NFL more than any of the big five sports in the U S we're talking NBA, NHL, MLB, you know, all of them that have these minor league feeders, you know, the NFL more so than them is dead focused on as much profit as possible, as much upward movement. So minor leagues don't fit that for them. Now, if someone else can do it for them, that's great. You know, like the USFL, like the XFL, where they have that partnership in terms of like some rule discussions and like theoretical things like that, that's what they're looking for. You know, they don't have to spend a dime. That partnership with the XFL, they're spending nothing on, by the way. Um, the USFL, they help them with their rule book. Like this stuff, that helps develop the game. They hope it stays around. And then they can look for guys on the side that, hey, you developed pretty good in this league. Mm-hmm. Want to come up to the NFL now? Sure. Sign me up. I'm a top tier running back in this league. Maybe I'll make an impact. And if not, you can go back to one of those leagues and go right back to what you're doing and make a career out of it. <clears throat> and that's the whole theory. They spend nothing, but they get the minor league system that people have been dying, that coaches and personnel have been dying to have at least for years since NFL Europe went under. Could the USFL play the XFL? Is that a possibility? It's a, it'd be a dream of mine. Um, That's what I don't, I'm asking because that'd be awesome. In my opinion. it would be like no, it'd be a dream of mine. I would I would kill to have a North American like at least U.S. based like champion of champions type of thing. I don't know if that'll happen right now. Everyone's got their own theory of how this will go. A lot of people think that there's going to be a merger some years down the line. If one of them starts is around and both say both are around for multiple years, like the USFL comes back year two and the XFL in 2024 comes back for a year two and the USFL is here for year three, multiple years down the line thought is maybe the two go, okay, for the best of the game, it's like an AFL NFL merger. They merge, they get the best of both worlds. They keep the best teams and markets they think deserve to exist and they stick around. And then we get that like two competing against each other. That's what I would do. Like do it in AFL NFL style, like the old pre-merger days, yeah. pre-1970 days, Super Bowls. That's what I, I would do thinking. it like that. That's I what I would that. do. I was thinking that like either yeah. schedule some or like they play their schedules, they play their schedule. You have your champion for XFL, your champion for you know, USFL and then it's like okay, now let's get those champions playing each other. Like, I think mm-hmm. that would be kind of cool. That's big exposure for XFL. It's big exposure for USFL. You get more people watching it, I think. They wouldn't be Super Bowl numbers by any stretch of the imagination, but it'd be like, hey, this is pretty cool. You got, especially with The Rock involved with the XFL, that's going to bring in numbers. Oh, yeah. Like, then USFL, they're going to bring in. But then, but then you're talking about they both have to start at the same time. Then, like we both have to start, right. and you're competing with each other. Like, who's gonna are you gonna watch USFL? You're gonna watch XFL, and that will lead to one of them failing. And that was the market I was. That was actually funny. That was the mark I was gonna make if you didn't. Was that you'd have to match up? Like, what's the best time of year? You know. Right. And I think like I think there's arguments for both. You know, for example, February to me, it's still winter. Right. So if, unless you get into a dome stadium, you better start picking. You have to pick warm markets, places you can sit outside. Um, otherwise, like with the Alliance American Football, they had a team in Salt Lake City. There were snow games in Salt Lake City in the early going of that season. People don't want to go out and sit to that. So you got to worry about that. You know, you got to pick good markets. And you and it's funny, the XFL, they haven't announced officially, but their rumored markets are all mostly West Coast and like one or two of them are East East Coast based. The USFL is completely like central and Eastern time frame. So like my thought is like, you know, in theory, if you want to do it that way, say they both establish themselves and they both pick the same schedule and it somehow goes into that merger discussion. I mean, in theory, you have a North and East Coast based audience and a West Coast based audience. You mash them together. You make one big alternative 
spring football baby. Right. And that's how it would work. Um, but yeah, otherwise right now, I mean, I, I, I just want to see the, the XFL take off in February 18th. Like that's what I think a lot of people are waiting on is, you know, does the USFL get through its championship on July 3rd, say what they're doing because they haven't announced if they're going to every one of their cities yet for reference to your audience. They're playing in Birmingham, Alabama right now, all their games. Right. If, up until the championship when they play in Canton, Ohio uh, for January 25th and July 3rd for the championship. And then after that, it's kind of up in the air. So Fox will have to announce, like, are we going to play in Birmingham all the games again for cost saving and we sell some of the teams off? Are we putting all the teams in local markets and we sell the teams as we go? There's rumors that we do two of those city-based hub deals where, like, one's in Birmingham, the other's in art rumored to be, like, say, like, or hypothetically based to be said in, like, Michigan, you know? So a lot of stuff in the air. You know, I think a lot of people just want to sit and wait and see how this plays out, too. You know? so I was going to say, one of the questions is, how does it stick around? One of those is, you have to play in different places. because Oh, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Can't, you can't have them all play in one spot, and I understand why. Well, Steve, I'll be honest. Like oh, One of the biggest complaints of the USFL, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it after seeing this season, I was wondering, they're not in local markets except Birmingham. Birmingham has been a great city. The two times I've been there, they love the team. They, they're sold on it. And it's they've come out really well, but it is really damn hard to sell a team from out of the from out of its area to a different local crowd. First off, but it's also hard to sell that team to the market it's advertising to if you're not there and if you're not actively marketing it there. Right. You know, there's no local market pushes in Detroit or New Jersey or in Tampa Bay that are saying, "Hey, go watch these games." they just aren't spending that money right now. But that's just because they want to put football on. The hope is you start seeing that because I'll be honest, that's one thing with the XFL I miss is that it felt more local. It felt like the communities were more embraced a little bit. And so I hope to see that more because I want to go to Detroit. I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. The day they announce they're playing in Detroit, I'm buying season tickets. I will go to almost every damn home game. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it because I want to go see a team that I care for in one of these leagues. St. Louis, you know, one, one or the other, whoever announces first that they'll get it, I'll, I'll buy season tickets for them. St. Louis is only three and a half hours from me. Detroit's a little farther, but it's still very manageable. You know, I go every weekend, man. Well, I was getting ready to say, why couldn't they just use the Rams thing? But I know the XFL was using the Rams indoor facility, but the USFL – I don't understand why they couldn't have pulled something. I mean, it's not, it's not impossible. A lot of it's just scheduling. And then, you know, do, here's the thing. Do they want to compete with the XFL in a direct market? Th this is also a fascinating point that I'll give you here with this. Houston has a USFL and XFL team come next year. The mm -hmm. gamblers in the USFL. And, I mean, credit, the, I'll, I'll, re, I'll retread a little bit or backpedal. It hasn't been fully confirmed by the league but it's heavily been suggested and rumored that and shown that the XFL is going back to Houston, like TDECU where the Cougars play. Mm -hmm. they, they've already announced that they have games set and or have agreements with the league that's on their side. So you're going to have a, two teams from different leagues competing directly in Houston, Texas. And as we talk with niches, that's hard to say which one do you pick out of a niche of a sport yeah. or a niche of a top sport in this country. Think about that. Like, so if you go to St. Louis where the battle Hawks, I mean, people talk about the battle Hawks still to this day. And they're like any nugget of rumor. They're like, it's coming back when, you know, that's going to be hard. That'd be really hard to do. I was just trying to think of facilities, but you're right because St. Louis, they have no football team. So this is their football team. Like screw exactly. I mean, local affiliates for ESPN there, they still talk about it. Local news sites, they still yeah. write articles like, when are these things coming back? They want it back. Like as soon as the day is confirmed officially by the league, as soon as that press release drops, they will blow up. The city will be losing their mind that this team's back. They were going to sell. And to put that in perspective, before the league was closing and I was going to buy this game, buy tickets to this game, they were going to play the LA Wildcats. I think it was like week seven it was. They were on pace to sell well over 50,000 tickets at the 
at the Dome of America Center. Think about that. 50,000. That's pushing NFL levels back at that time. Right. That, that city loved that team. It still does. Wants it back desperately. So here's what can happen. Bears go to Arlington, and then XFL or USFL team goes to Soldier Field. There, we solved it. Chicago Blitz. I'm booking it right now. There you go. I'm in Soldier Field right now. Serious. Yeah, tell Lori Lightfoot to kiss everybody's ass, let the Bears go, and then put them right there. Be the ultimate spiteful thing. The city would like, the city officials would embrace the Blitz too. They'd be like, we'll give you the red carpet. Come to this wondrous place of history that this other team left in the dust for some weird horse track up north. <laughs> and they will sell tickets. And they would probably try and sell tickets. Even though it may not work because, again, people listen to it. It'd be funny to be the only one embraced by like, the city of Chicago, like their chamber of commerce or something like that. It'd be like the seal of approval on their website. The Bears, it's like, where's the Bears one? Well, they aren't the Chicago Bears. They're Bear. the Illinois Bears. <laughs> For the tens of listeners I get, if you don't know what Illinois looks like, the Bears are literally moving at 30 minutes. Without traffic, without traffic, I cannot stress that enough. Without traffic, keep that in mind. 30 minutes west, like northwest. So people need to calm down. They'll still be called the Bears. I don't know about Chicago, but I still think they'll be called Chicago. It's the they'll, be, they'll be called Chicago. They, they aren't going to be petty like back in the 80s when they were like saying, I'll, re- I'll, I'll fight that. I'll revoke the Chicago name out of that. They won't do that. I, that, that was extreme back then. It was. It'd be extreme now. Call them the Decatur Staley's for all I care. Move them over there and just. just yes. Bring it back. Bring the history back. <laughs> well, they were. What were they before that? They were Arizona, like Arizona. Well, and the Bears are the oldest. Well, yes. Yeah, say you have a uh, because the Chicago Cardinals were also That's, started yes. up around that yes. time, and then and they left they Arizona. Were, right, and they well, well, they eventually went to Arizona. So they actually. St. Louis, snake bitten city for a lot of pro teams. The Cardinals were in St. Louis for a time. Right. They then moved to Arizona uh, in the 90s. I'm going to say off the top of my head, um, which then that's how the Rams came about because a few years away without a team. LA wasn't working at the time back in, ni- in the mid to early, or the early 90s. They move over to St. Louis fill right in there so yeah that's uh kind of how it fits the bill you know you got them i mean hell st louis you want me to talk about more i mean atlanta hawks that used to be the st louis team keep that in mind too that's true saying there's a lot of teams that come through st louis that it's like they've gone elsewhere to different pastures you know st louis is boring that's why they leave oh Oh, no, no. I actually had a good time when I went to that I, Hawks game. <laughs> hey, this was a fun one. Uh, it's been New Year's Eve in St. Louis one time. It's not bad. I'm just saying that because the Cubs. The Cubs had that shirt that said St. Louis is boring. That's where that comes well, from. Well, yes, yeah. No, I know exactly what you're referencing with that, too. You know? <laughs> no, I don't hate St. Louis. <laughs> and then, you know, in St. Louis, they, they hate Chicago because Chicago. So... <laughs> You know? And what's across the street from the Bush Stadium? Uh, the bar. Yeah, they got that little plaza with like it's basically a ballpark village. That, that's it what it is. is. What it is. Mm-hmm. I've heard that's fun. You see, they have a little bit of. I will say this: yeah, I hate going to the city of Chicago. So if that makes St. Louis people feel better, I hate going into the city. <laughs> if that makes them feel better. Oh, uh, you kill me! You kill me! It's a pain in the <laughs> ass. <laughs> I don't know how much time we have left, but I got one more little anecdote for you. Uh, Because I did go to the city of Chicago recently, uh, a month ago. Mm. And uh, yeah, I went to a concert, one of these like, uh, like one of those like club, like one of those like uh, club-esque like house concert places. You Mm -hmm. go in, it's like a story up, it's standing room only. Um, It was called, uh, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to hate that I'm forgetting this. Um, I'll look it up though. So, but um, it was for you know, me and brother went out there. Had a good time. North side of Chicago. You know, it's good to be out in the city again. Interesting time leaving though. But, you know, new stories well, every time you go and visit there. 
Well, I mean, where I live now in the suburbs makes it a little farther. Mm -hmm. uh, if I hop on a train to get there and it's not the express, take you like an hour and a half on the freaking train. Hour or 15. You're talking, you're talking Metro, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you drive there, it takes like an hour driving. Yeah, I got you. Depends on where you go. I was there too a couple weekends ago. Uh, near Wrigleyville, actually. So, oh, well, there you go. There you go. Wasn't quite in Wrigleyville, but you're kind of on the outside. -y. I don't know if I'll get canceled for saying this. It was called Boys Town. I don't think it's called Boys Town anymore, but okay. you know, apparently that's not what you're supposed to call it no more. So political really? claims. Interesting. You know, I wouldn't have known that. I, mean, I might get canceled for that. Don't know if that's what it's supposed to be called anymore. Yeah, I don't know how much time you have either. We haven't even talked about the Bears. You see, here's the problem. We haven't even I was more curious about USFL stuff. Because I mean, hey, you want to go into you want to go to Chicago, that's fine. I can give you a little more on the on the league. I mean, honestly, like the USFL, they chant like the championship's gonna be July 3rd, playoffs are June 25th. Um all but you have two of the four teams that are locked up for the playoffs, the Stallions and the Generals. They're already ready to go. They locked up their playoff seating last week. Both the rest of the league could have its playoffs locked up by next week if all things go correctly. I don't think they will, but the Stars and the Breakers currently have a chance to lock it up uh, if they want. So should be good. Personally, I think that you'll see a rematch of week one where the Stallions and the Generals will replay uh, the champ. They'll basically play the championship. Should be a good game to me, if that's how it plays out. Uh, I still I have Birmingham winning at the moment, so a lot of Stallions fans down south will be real happy. That's what I can tell you. But, uh, yeah, watch out for that. NBC, Fox, USA, FS1. That's where you can go find them. It's good stuff. I'd like to tell you I have more time to watch it, but I don't know. During my week of the summer, I'll probably watch it. I'll have weekends. Hey, I'm, I am pressuring you, but, but hey, if you got time, you want football, I say for you at least, watch a Panthers game. Reggie Corbin, dude, he's the league's, league's leading rusher. Dude's no joke. Like, seriously, if they if he's not in NFL camp next year, Jeff Fisher's going to be super thrilled to have him back next year. He has been a monster. Jeff Fisher's looking good. He looks healthy. That time away from the NFL has. <laughs> the, the backwards baseball cap uh cool slowed down lifestyle vibes of Tennessee has really done him well. <laughs> Does his son coach with him? Yes. He actually, he's a secondary coach. One of my favorite, um, what's the show on Amazon uh, for the NFL? I always forget this. Um, it, for on Amazon, I don't know. I'll have to check, but I mean, I the, you say NFL show, I think Hard Knocks. It's like hard um, knocks. Um, all or nothing. That's what it is. Oh, yes. Yes. I love the one with the I, when they're I remember exactly what you're talking. I like that one. I was just saying. I like the one when the Rams are leaving. It's the second season, I think, with as Jeff Fisher. It makes you appreciate Jeff Fisher. You have this like vision of him, and you watch that, and you actually see who he is, and you're like, oh, he's not this person. He's this person. And, and yeah. they were actually devastated. When he walked in and told him he was fired, every player in there was just like, except for maybe Jared Goff. He was probably the only one that was happy. Everybody else was just like, oh, my God. No, that's, really? that's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely vibed down. I think for you, like if you want to see Jeff Fisher where he is right now, because um, the, the league has a series that's like Hard Knocks called United by, United by Football. Really? doing. Yeah, it's on Tubi, which is free, by the way. Right. Just look it up or look up the USFL. Because um, he did an episode, it was covering, like half of it was on him. Like why he's doing this, um, what is where his life is right now, post-NFL career right now. So I recommend you check that out. And plus it's a lot of personal stories for the players. Um, you know, it's done well. And it's, and it's filmed by NFL Films. Okay. So, yeah, so NFL Films worked on the cinematography for it, so you get a good you get a good gist out of it, you know, and it kind of helps you keep up with how some of the teams have been doing this season too. 
Okay, I'll have to check that out when I hear free. I'm like, absolutely. If it's free, I'm going to hop yep. on. Tubi, Tubi's absolutely free. It's owned by Fox, too, so it makes a lot of sense why it's on okay. there. But, yeah. But, yeah, absolutely free, man. You should definitely check it out. I promise next year, if you if this stuff's still around, I'm going to watch more of it. I'll okay. school you, dude. Like I said, I'll, I'll catch you up to speed real quick. You and me, whole afternoon. Zoom sharing a brewski or something like that. I'll 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 catch you up real quick. I promise you that. Well, it's either that or the Bears suck again, and we have to discuss that all the time. Well, now to be fair, it's setting up to where we're punting to 2023 anyway. Some stuff is me happy, but you know what we're setting up for right now. You can you know what's going to be set up for just on looking at the roster. Well, again. I don't know how much time you have. I'm going to say this. No, this, let's do it. Let's, let's just dive in. I, I got time. I ain't, I ain't going anywhere. Well, you're a busy guy. You got two podcasts going on. Oh, but you caught me on an off day, man. And I'm on and I'm on summer break, so. See, we're good. We're good. I got a lot to catch up. All this stuff with the uh, indoor and all with the arena and the USFL, I've been, I've been meaning to talk some Bears football somewhere, so. Well, so I couldn't. So this is how busy I am. I couldn't. Even, I didn't even really watch the draft, like the oh, whole thing. Okay. Thing, um, because what happens is I come home, and I just kind of want to watch something to take my mind off. If I'm watching the draft, I kept up with it. Like I was seeing who was getting drafted. I just wasn't watching it. So I shouldn't say I, w- I was on there. Like, oh, who went number one? Who went number two? And then, then I think I went to bed. And then the next day, I don't remember. Maybe I had a baseball game. I don't even remember. And All right. I was just seeing people complain about the Bears draft. And I was like, oh, God, like, what did we do that was so bad? It got better, though. So the draft wasn't what everybody wanted. But as it was going along, it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. We needed offensive linemen. There's a couple offensive linemen in there. But we have to fix the offensive line thing with the Bears through free agency as well. But we can't go get a 39-year-old left tackle that's on his knees every other play. No, that that was so telegraph. Like I said, it was Orlando Pace all over again. As soon as they made that that pickup last year, it was like, this is Orlando Pace. You, I guarantee you, he's not going to be able to keep up. He, as much as he has a legendary career, he's on the tail end of that career. It was inevitable. Yes. You know, unfortunately, it was inevitable. And some yeah. people tried to convince me. I'm like, you're not going to convince me. This is this is a very rushed move. Yes. You will not be able to do it. I'm guaranteeing you that. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, one cool thing, because I'm going to be all over the place. Um, they did, When they drafted Doug Kramer, I jumped up and down. Oh, I bet you did. Played for U of I, so I got to watch mm-hmm. him. I talked to Coach Bart Miller weeks before that. Um, he's offensive line coach at U of I, which was great. Got to talk to him. And he actually is from a high school that's probably 15 minutes away, 15, 20 minutes away. Oh, nice. So okay. went, to, went to Hensdale Central. And I jumped up and down, and I'm like, he is perfect because he's mean. He's nasty. And watch him put the U of I in the U of I. We already know. People can shut up. It's not a winning football program yet. But the way they could run the football, even when Lovey Smith was there, and then last year, the way they could run the football, he was the anchor of that. Like, he he has to be mean. Now, he was a center, but he can play anywhere. Talking to Coach Miller, and you listen to Coach Miller, he trains these guys to play every position. He's like, if you watch the U of I play, he'll move guys around. Oh, you're a good polar. Well, you're gonna go in on these couple of plays as a tackle because you can't. Like, because the he is like, I will teach them how to play tackle. I will teach them how to play guard. They will learn how to snap the ball, snap the football. So the thing that they could use him on the Bears, he can go anywhere. He can play in any position. So I was just jumping up and down. I was like, this is an offensive lineman we need <laughs> finally. But yeah, that was my big thing. The draft wasn't that bad. I thought they did. Okay. No, I mean, I didn't think. I think over like early on, I was like. Personally, the end of the draft is what I was like, okay, I'm a little more mellowed out with this. I just had hoped that they were going for higher profile offensive linemen to start. But I understand why they picked up the guys that they did with like Kyler Gordon, you know, as well as Jaquan Brisker. I get it. You know, if we're talking poor production last year or just really areas where 
like Chicago, I mean, some of it was just unfortunate. Like Desmond Trufant, he he, he decides they they he's not going to show up, but then he goes and plays in New Orleans, you right. know, and you're like, oh great, there goes arguably a starting corner on the opposite side that just now we have to plug that hole. But like, like I said, Gordon, I mean, he's coming from a school and a program that, I mean, has done an excellent job at developing secondary talent. So like, I'm looking to see him play pretty well. And then Brisker's hard a hard nosed heavy hitter, you know. Big Ten, Penn State. I mean, it's what I want for the opposite side of Eddie Jackson. You know, yes. and Eddie now you you hope you think he should be a little more free reigning, should be a little more like how Eber, Eberfus is with uh, his own defensive schemes. He's more free reign to do what he is his as his individual task. You know, right. you're focused on doing this assignment. You do this assignment well. You know. And everyone has to execute their specific assignments to a T. So he gets to focus more on, I get to hit people. I get to play free range, a true free safety now. You know, Mm -hmm. Brisker has that talent to, of course, be that. So, like, I like those picks. But, again, like, as a Bears fan, you saw what happened last year. You know, what was the main thing Justin Fields was doing last year? Hitting the ground and running for his, his damn life. And we're drafting, you know, secondary players. And we're hoping out of the minimal free agent signings that we'll get something put together. Now, Lucas Patrick, okay. I feel a little bit better now. You know, you hope Tevin Jenkins is healthier this year. He should be. Larry Borum, full season will be under his belt, you hope. Right. He's solid. And now it's just the right ta- right guard that you got to think about. Well, I th- like you said, I think when you saw the Bears had too many holes to fill. So that was another thing. They do. Like, again, but you had to rank them. Which ones were the most? I think everybody was going to say offensive line. But That's think right. That, yeah. You would think that. But we also need corners. So they are drafting needs. We needed corners. We They've got to figure out that defensive line because you got Akeem Hicks is gone. They that, do. That's yeah. got to be the next thing. And then also, who are we going to throw the ball to? Well... They're slowly but surely. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think a lot of it comes down to you know where are we mixing. Mason... Who are we gonna throw the ball to in 2022 and 2023? We'll find somebody in 23, 24. Like you said, we're we're, we're... it's it's all about next year. Yes. it really is. You know, this year it's a lot of evaluation and building up your own prospects, doing it the Indianapolis way or the Kansas City way. You know, building up the roster and stockpiling our talent, our farm system, our scouted guys. Just hope that they don't pull, you know, let's not like hide the money back in the dragon's lair, you know, and we do spend that cap, you know, don't, (laughs) don't go, don't go buy an off season like the Colts do and like just hoard money. You know, that's all I'm going to say. Don't, don't be the Colts in that regard. 30 million. Draft well, draft well, but spend some of it, please. You know, Get the best of both worlds mixture. Because, like, Brian like Brian Pringle, okay? Like, that's one that I've been seeing, you know, I and I hear people discuss. It's like, one-year deal, he has a lot of potential coming out of Kansas City that you're like, well, maybe he steps up. He's out of that, like, clustered receiving core, and maybe he gets a little more explosive and he gets to do his own thing. We'll see. You know, it's a lot of hinging type of things. Like, maybe this could work out. Maybe, in theory, with this system, with them having more opportunities because they were so light on receiving core. Like, uh, Valus Jones, you know, he'll be a good – I think he'll be a really good third guy, slot, gadget guy, mm-hmm. you know. Obviously, that was something he was great with, his yards after the catch, open space at Tennessee. So that's, I think, what they're looking to do with him. Pringle, to me, as of now, now that could change in the offseason – or with OTAs, with training camp and all that, he's kind of my two, just because of the system he he comes from. And, you know, he already was getting some good – he was already doing decently well when he was given opportunities in Kansas City. So, you know, that that itself, like that's my answer to the best of my ability with the receiving core. Still doesn't make me say, wow, (laughs) you know. And, and that could change. You know, maybe maybe Pringle does come out and and he blows his expectations away like people are talking. Or maybe Valus Jones – becomes that studded third round pick that, you know, even though everyone critiques his age, dear God, you bring up the age of, of him coming out of the draft, <laughs> you know, he's, he's 25. What? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, he's, 
he's 25, but he's yeah. damn good. You know, trust us, we'll get years out of him. You know, well, it's better than signing a 39 year old. So, what, what did you got to pick? Make a decision. I'll, t- I'll take the 25 year old that you know, I'll go with that. I trust that 25 is fine. That means he is. He should have adult muscle on him now, and he'll be fine. He'll be good. <laughs> um, who else was I thinking of? Um, but yeah, Bears just have too much, too much stuff. And I swear to God, if we don't see two or three running backs being used this year, I'm going to flip out. I'm going to go to Eberflus in Chicago and have a conversation. Oh no, dude! If if Getsy, if Getsy doesn't use two running backs well, I'm going to go to. I would go to him and be like. How did you – did you have amnesia? Like, you came from Green Bay, right? Like, you had, you had A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. Did you just, did you just forget? Like, that, that's what I'll do. Because otherwise, that's like the expectation is that you're going to see Herbert and Montgomery get that split set. But Montgomery will be like that 60, 70 k- – percent carries of the game right and then you'll have herbert spell him and like or he'll be like that bruising guy to soften up the defense a little bit on some runs because he's a bigger body and more you know he's got more muscle mass on him and that uh, ember guy ember from baylor that they drafted yeah yeah he they draft him because he misses a lot of tackles or like breaks a lot of tackles that could be your running back slash slot guy to help with the wide receiver core there. Uh, there was an article. He's like 97 percentile of like miss like breaking tackles or something in college football. Like it was amazing. Wow. And that type of Baylor offense where he's supposed to go one-on-one with people. Uh, be pretty good to spell. Uh, then you got Justin Fields, who I'm not sold on still, but going to have to be. Well, they are like Getsy and company have been saying, you know, they're going to play to his strengths, which, hey, you and I know we're going to be evaluating that really quick. Yeah, I better see a lot of bootlegs. I better see a lot of RPO. You know, I better see this guy doing a lot more running and giving options to run and get out of the pocket than he was last year. You know, don't send him back there to die. <laughs> you know, oh, really? let him, let him, yeah, a running game, consistently running it, you know. And I'm going to get canceled for this too. He has been hanging out with Colin Kaepernick, so I don't know what what what. Eh, more more experience. I mean, guy knows how to play that position in the same style that he's playing now. So I, I think that's like Getsy to me. It it all hinges a lot on him. Everfus, we know Everfus is the defensive minded. I'm going to handle the, you know, taking care a lot about that. And then Getsy's in there. It's like you, you bring your system, you get in what you need. Obviously, or people from Green Bay that you can find. Like I said, Lucas Patrick is a crucial one to me, just because he's an upgrade over like Sam Mustafer. So, yeah, you know that that one alone is a great is a solid signing just to get solidifying your offensive line. Not even worry about Cody Whitehair doing high snaps if you have to put him in there. I love Cody Whitehair as a center, but like that's the one thing my like me and my dad talking about is like I'm like Dad, he does a great job find like looking at and depicting where blitzes are coming from line assignments and all that. He's like, yeah, but he's terrible at snaps. I'm like, true. You got me on that point. <laughs> but well, I guess I'll Doug take Kramer. that. <laughs> that's where Doug Kramer comes in. Right. Yeah. And like I said, Kramer, I mean, if you're talking about off, uh, utility, like I said, the right tack, the right guard from what I can tell is the one that's the only one that really needs competition, you know, because like Borum and Jenkins are going to solidify those tackles. And then you got white hair who's in, his guard duty again, Patrick, who's going to be the center, who's taking the right guard, you know, and early odds, I guess, are Sam Mustafer. Yeah. But, you know. You'll go with more experienced person, but again, you do need guys in. What was it? At one point, the Bears had like seven or eight offensive linemen, and that was it. Like, so. Yeah. Something like that. So you need more offensive linemen. You need competition. Um, I think that, I don't remember. So I think the offensive line will be okay. But like you said, at least offensive-wise and offensive line-wise, you're not going to see a cohesive unit until 2023. Like, it's just – or near the end of the year, hopefully. So we're going to have to watch an offense break down again. We lost wide receivers. We don't have this playmaker. 
now for you, zone blocking, yay or nay? Because that's going to be a lot of the focus with this. So for me personally, as an offensive guy for football, I love zone. But I know NFL is a different animal. High school, I can sit there and say, we're a zone team. College, you could sit there and say, you're a zone team. NFL, you got to do all of it. Zone blocking was fine for the Bears. I did not have a problem with zone blocking. They got yards out of it. They pin and pulled a lot. So they zone block, but they can pull somebody. Now they started doing GT stuff and pulling guard tackle when they started doing even power was a struggle for them. That's why you got to solidify those guards. If your guards can't pull, you're going to have a problem. It's crucial. Mm -hmm. But if that's what they can do, then that's what they can do. Um, I'm all for zone blocking. They do have blocked a lot, which is similar to that, but they're going to double team everywhere and get to a linebacker. And then they can RPO the other linebacker if they don't want to get to them. They can insert somebody. So if you want to talk about bringing a fullback in or whatever, they can run the duo ISO block and insert somebody to help Montgomery find a lane and just go. If that's what they can do. Great. Fantastic. Opens up mm-hmm. stuff for Justin Fields because you have to zone block and RPOs because the NFL is only one yard down the field. College is three. Yeah. So you're going to have to make those decisions very quickly. I have no problem with it. That's a long-winded answer, but I don't mind it if that's what they can do. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just asking, like, you know, are they adapted to it? And, I mean, you know, I last year, I mean, when we run, like, seriously, the, like the Bears' offensive line last season, this is part of why, you know, Matt Nagy with us got, at least to me, got so frustrating, was that pass pro, they were it was awful. <laughs> overall it was just awful pass pro but you know clearly the run game you know which is yeah it's more simple to do run game you just run ahead you beat the guy in front of you most of the time and you just make sure if it's you say what hole it is you better open that damn hole up or you better at least open a hole up you know it's easier go forward beat the guy off the line get your hands in between the center of his pads and move his ass backwards you know so i don't know they never caught it just seemed like it never caught on with that but like I don't know, this year, I guess, like, I don't know, zone blocking, I guess I'm I'm asking it just because, you know, I, I'm more as watching it last year as like, hey, when running ha- when run game happened for them, it worked. They do it fine. You know, it sounds like we'll have more of a focus this year. You know, I just want to see more chances where we get a better – the pocket doesn't break down as much. There's yeah. better protection, you know. Over the years with yeah. the Bears – it just seemed like they got all these tight. I, I bring this up all the time. They got all these tight ends like two years ago because that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to run the football. You had Mitch Trubisky. You wanted to run the football. Then you don't use all the tight ends in the run game. So you got these guys on the roster for no reason. That's another thing the Bears need to do. They have to utilize tight end blocking. That opens up the box. But that's the problem. If you got nobody to throw it to, they're going to stack the box and say, throw it. We dare you to throw it. So I think you and I can read this, but some people that I read online – when they talk about running the football, well, it's like, okay, they got eight guys in the box. We want them to do like, there's nothing you can do. Like I said, you of I last year and the bears were very similar to me where they, where they lived and died was running the football. Yeah. Talking to coach Miller about it. They, they know that you have to be able to pass the ball. And that's one thing you of I will do better at this year. They got Syracuse transfer quarterback. They got some other guys that will do better. Bears are the same thing. They, and they have to utilize tight end blocking. They have to utilize, getting outside runs to soften the box up because you can't live and die by that with the bears, especially because we had an old offensive line. Now we're going to have a young, we have a lot of young draft guys coming in. Oh yes. So yes, we you're, you're going to have to get creative in getting to the outside. You're going to get creative in this night and then pass protection. My God, I think being younger and being healthier will help, I, but you cannot do what I saw was a lot of five-man protection, which you can't do, and a lot of five-man protection with deep routes. So when that happened, yeah. that was the problem. And that's when you knew Matt Nagy was calling the offense, when you saw longer passes with five-man protection. No, you got to keep that tight end to block. you got to keep that running back end to block. You have to run screens to soften all that up. You have to have an intermediate route. You can have one guy just bailing all hell out to get deep, but you got to have something in the middle. You got to have some other type of thing, which I think bringing a Green Bay offense in. What do they? What are they very good at? They're very good at that stuff. They're very good at getting the ball quick. They're very good at. I know it's Aaron Rodgers, but if he can bring that down there and say this is what works, then hopefully the Bears and that will so- everything softens everything up. Well, know? sure. 
And, and, you know, I think here's another point I got brought up to me that was really good. Um, I didn't think about this. Um, Pringle and St. Brown, at least, they're two re- receivers that are coming into this. St. Brown, first off, worked with Getze. So, you know, that that's one thing you can say, great to have that chemistry and understanding of what you want to do offensively. But both of them all come from systems that they very much pride themselves on if the if the original script doesn't work, scramble drill, opening yourself up, mm-hmm. being ready to read what the quarterback wants in, you know, a dire situation, that's what they exceed at, you know. And I mean, I know some people are arguing that Chicago didn't do a great job of that last year. There's probably tape that proves that. I know that, you know, having guys like that that can come in and say, okay, I know what to do here, you know. Right. And like I said, Pringle being probably – arguably the number two right now, at least going into training camp here soon. He's a guy that probably is like, okay, this is what we need to do. You know, if Justin Fields is back there, the bootleg fails and the play is already broken, start running the hell around and finding openings in your secondary. Don't wait on the route. Don't, don't stand, don't like just kind of jog around a little, like actively try and outmaneuver your guy, you know, that right. helps us like, and that's going to be because of the offense being more opening out of the pocket. You imagine this year, they're going to have to have receivers that know like, Hey, we need to be ready for our QB to throw to, you know, we can't let them just get killed. So, that, is a good, that is a good point. The receivers will know what to do better. Hopefully in mm-hmm. that situation. But the big thing is Justin Fields. What kind of progression is he going to take? Because again, was it all Mitch Trubisky's fault? Looking back at it, no. No. But, but you hope that Justin Fields takes the next step. I'm still – I have to be on board with it. I have to be okay with him being there. I'm not sold. I I have all 2022 film of Justin Fields at Ohio State. So I have proof of certain downfalls of his from watching it. I watch these offenses to steal from them. So I know things that he does. And he did them last year. He wants to – one read and then take off. He did better as the year went on, but again, that's where they blame the offensive line, and I have a problem with that all the time. Was it their fault? Absolutely, but there are times where it's not all their fault either. But, you know, it is what it is. So you got to see Justin Fields take that next step. But again, we're going to take lumps as the Chicago Bears this year. It's going to be Yeah, the, they didn't say it. You know, I know that Poles was asked about this in the offseason about – is this a rebuild? Are we resetting? And of course it's the cliche. No, we're retooling, mm-hmm. you know? And I guess when you look at the cap situation and, you know, they did keep, they shedded a lot of guys with high contracts, like, or like people like uh, Khalil Mack, where it's like veterans that, you know, yeah, maybe they still could be good, but we want to think younger and we can get something out of it for this. So I guess I can I can agree it's a retool. You know, thing is though, you know, it is for next year we're building towards. Mm-hmm. You know, you really got this is an eval period. This is straight up evaluation for this. So you're going to see even more changes next year. You know, right now this is kind of like a holding pattern. See what you can get the best out of. Hell, I I mean if if it, if the Bears get to the playoffs this season, they have overachieved immensely. Getting Getting that, I think that this could be at best a seventh seed team right now. If not, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if they just miss or miss the playoffs and they just reset for next year. You know, that, that's my a, expectations they, right now. They have a tough schedule and their bye weeks not till week 14. Yeah, it's a long way off. It's a long sledding. Because you got San Francisco to start and Jimmy G still might be there. Like, yeah, Jimmy G or uh, – oh, my goodness. I cannot my, believe you're going to have both of those guys that might be there. My EIU guy, like, he'll still be there. And then Green Bay week two, like, are you kidding me? And then you got Houston and New York. Yeah, whatever. Minnesota, toss-up. Washington football team should be a win because Carson Wentz will break both of his ankles at the same time. Yep. New England, Dallas, Miami, Detroit, Atlanta, New Jets, Green Bay again. Like, it's – then you end with Philadelphia, Buffalo, Detroit, and Minnesota. It's not easy. They're tests. Thing, but it's not easy. It's a lot of tests, you know. I, that, that's 
that's what I take away from this. You know, I Chicago's going to get tested this year. You're going to the main, like you said, the main things you're watching out for is, you know, Justin Fields, does he progress? Do the second, do the picks that they picked up this season, you know, instantly make an impact like a, you know, like a Brisker or, Gor- or Gordon, do they make an instant impact on those in the secondary? And, uh, you know, how well is the offensive line improved? I think that though, and how does the scheme for Luke Getze transition with what the bears have already currently for what they most likely are going to bring back is the majority of last year's offensive line. Anyway, healthy this time around credit for some people like Jenkins, Borum, you know, company that'll have more time out there. So a lot, those are things to think about. And then beyond that, I mean, it's just seeing what you can do going into the off season. And then who's going to rush the quarterback? Yep. Well, and yeah, <laughs> who's going to rush the, who's going to rush the quarterback and who's going to be in the interior, you know? Cause I mean, like seriously between, I think, I think like Tonga and Blackson, you know, I mean, I like Tonga. I like Blackson as rotational guys. Um, I don't know if either one of them yet has proven that they could be a, we'll plug them in for like two to three quarters length and then rotate them out every now and then type of people type of nose tackles or, or defensive tackles. But, you know, all of a sudden that's become a weak link of any position the bears have had in recent years. All of a sudden the defensive line is one that's up to question. I know. How does that even happen? I know one of the things they pride themselves on is defense. And now we're looking at going, okay, who's going to be in the back? Well, they drafted some guys, but who's going to rush quarterback? We don't. What? I mean, <laughs> linebacker. Better, plays. I, what? I mean, look, Either Gib- either Gibson keeps improving from what he had last year. Um, you hope that Quinn gets stays a similar production. He's not going to get a record year again. I highly doubt you see him break his own record or match it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you better hope that he gets something like double digits. That's my expectation for sacks. And then if it's not Gibson, Muhammad better come in there and make an impact that's better than Gibson's, in my opinion. They're – I my understanding with uh, Eberflus is or Eberflus is that he uh, he rotates out guys. He gets them try to be as uh, fresh as possible and keeps the uh, edge rushers on a uh, consistent basis. Of okay, you're in here. It's not like every play, but it's like half of the t- half the game you're going to be in, half the game you're going to be out getting fresh. You know, keep those legs so that you're always able to give 100 percent much more consistently. I guess right. So you know. Whoever's the yeah, your question is mainly whoever's on the opposite side of Quinn is going to be what you're watching out for, you know. And they're just going to double team him. Just... I think that'll happen. I mean, last year, if people didn't learn that lesson, they better be good at the, against the speed rush because that's what he does best. He speed rushes you. Well, because it was either you had Mac on the other side, but then when he was unhealthy, once mm-hmm. in a while you had Akeem Hicks in the middle. So it was like, who do you? really look at well now max gone keem hicks just signed with tampa bay i think he's going down there he's trying to win a ring that's a huge pickup so it's like who do we have and you're gonna have to have guys step up we're not going to be as big so they're not going to they might not demand as much double teams so the linebackers are going to have to step up their game because they're going to start to get blocked but you're right then we have to rely on our safeties to come running down there and make a play because evil is going to play like a four three type defense sort of i think so they're gonna have to have linebacker play they're gonna have to bring guys into the box and make tackles and they'll hop into that three-man odd front man front once in a while but you know I, i'm not the defense i'm worried about which i've never thought of saying for a bears team how bad it was we've been the last couple of years at least the defense was pretty good i think it's just gonna look different i'm saying they're gonna be bad because he is a defensive guy so he'll be okay it's just gonna look different i think it will look a little different than what we're used to well, at least we're going back to four three. At least we're going back to a, it'll be four three four two five look, to, and I think I, that's another reason why I think he drafted all these corners and safeties to hop into a four two look to bring outside linebackers down to try to make a play. Yeah, I really think that's what they're going to try to do, but they are going to have to hop into that three four look because that's what this team has been built on for the last couple of years of like. So he is still going to have to hop into that, but it's a scary time in Chicago where we're looking at going. Oh my God, who's who's going to do what on defense? Uh, Matt Smith. Like now we're looking at going, oh. When you're retooling, when you're <laughs> retooling, anything can happen. You know. We're rebuilding there, uh 
champ. You can call it retooling if you want. It's a rebuild. <laughs> Yeah, I, honestly, I'm like I said, I, I, my expectations at least, I mean, they were low last year, but I'm I'm doing it saying as low, but I'm curiously on the low end, just like, you know, I have nothing to lose to start the season, you know, you I'm no, ready to go. You have nothing to lose. You have XFL coming right after and USFL coming right after. So if the Bears stink, you're like, wait a minute, though, I still have this. You're all good. I definitely have nothing to lose. I got Canadian football coming up <laughs> here in a few weeks, man. Oh yeah. Like I said I, I got that. XFL next year. USFL in arena football. Life's good. Life's good for me overall, you know. Either Chicago or not, life is damn good right now for me. Well, I've taken a lot of your time and I want people I want the tens of people to know that since you're big time with these two podcasts, you still come on this one. Big time. <laughs> you kill me. I am the most annoying person on Twitter. I'll just be like, you're big time. I I swear, it's anytime I post something about that, it's like, oh, look at you. Don't forgive me. Don't don't leave me behind, man. People are just (laughs) passing me up left and right. My my friend Logan I talked about, uh, they started a podcast. They put up an Illinois thing the other day. It has 1,100 views. Wow, okay. That is big time for them. And I told him, I'm like, you're going to, he told me the reason why they started it. They talked about it before, but then I did it during COVID. And he goes, well, if Steve's gonna can do it, we can do it. So then they kind of took off. And I told him, I said, you're going to surpass me. Like, it's just going to happen. So it's more of a proud thing when I say those things. Yeah, there's not jealousy. It's a little bit like, oh, that's cool. But just don't forget me because I helped. It's like the office. I'm kind of like Michael Scott, like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, you. I'm like Ricky Gervais, too. Like, hey, hold on a second. <laughs> Get your face. Which, if you have not watched his stand-up on Netflix. Oh, that that might be my end-of-night thing I'm doing. It's funny. Does he push the envelope? Possibly. <laughs> the way you said that. I don't remember the dude's name, but he's uh he's the taller. He's one of Jesse's friends in Breaking Bad. He's a taller guy, more shaggy hair. Yeah. You just sounded like him for a split second. Well, what if like all like I'll that. say is woke people shouldn't watch Ricky Gervais's stand-up special. You know, you might be right. It's a little dark humor in it, too. Okay. But if you know who Ricky Gervais is, you know that's kind of what he's going to (laughs) do. Hey, I was quarantined for five days, so one of the things was what to watch. Well, yeah, you got to get some entertainment, man. You can't just sit in bed and do nothing. I mean, I sat in a chair and did nothing. Oh, okay. Can't sit in a chair all day and do nothing. <laughs> but yes, to end this, uh, go watch Ricky Gervais' stand-up special. No, um, <laughs> no. Honestly, in all seriousness, don't forget the little people when you make it big in arena football. If, and if that if that happens, I won't trust and I'm me. Stealing your model when XFL comes out, I'm starting an XFL podcast. It's just going to happen. You should, hey, you should. You should probably get in soon. It's kind of getting filled up. Saturated, as they call it in the biz. They can kiss my ass. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad we're talking. I'm back on here for stuff like this. I swear to God. I miss this. I miss talking to you like this. This is good. But you'll be back on for the bear stuff. Like I'm sure there's bear stuff to talk about in the summer. Oh, oh yeah. Look, I mean that'll be my off season for alternatives. So like NFL talk, you know I'm gonna get back in on that. You just know it. Yeah. You know so, it. but the tens of people listening, if I haven't lost you at the hour and forty four minute mark, um, check out Zach's podcast, USFL podcast, Inside the Walls podcast. Uh, both are taking off. You're. The inside the arena one apparently is on the main 
website that I mixed up. I thought it was yeah, the other that, one. That, that one. one's the official show of the National Arena League. So that one, that one's got the stamp of approval from one already. Which is good. See, that's big time. You say it's not big time, but it kind of is. Like how many people? Uh, can uh, see I'm all, I also not toot my own horn because that would be ironic for me to say this and toot my own horn. I find myself as a humble guy. So that's just, you know, I try not to, my advertising game, my self-advertising game, it, it does not always come out well. That is all I'll tell you. Well, when, when you're able to quit your day job and just do that, I think that's when it's big time. The day I get, yes, the day I get there, it'll be big time. Right now, still hasn't happened. If some of my boss is watching this, it, it hasn't, I'm sorry, it hasn't happened yet. You know this. I'm going to work them tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there 8 a.m. sharp. I promise. But then at 9 a.m. when they give me the call that the podcast is full time, flipping I'm it walking, up. I'm walking into the office saying, I quit. And then I'll walk out. Maybe maybe shove over some office equipment. I don't know. Cause a ruckus a little or something. I don't, I'm not sure. No, you're going to walk in and say, thank you for all the opportunities you've given me in this job. And I appreciate everything. But I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> Drop it up, Bob. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and I just realized my baseball kids found out I had a podcast. They're probably going to listen to this and hear me. Hear me. <laughs> One day we're on a bus and they're going to listen to this. One day we're on a bus going somewhere and I could hear all the way in the back of the bus some about Coach Steve's show. And I'm like, nope, nope. They did not find it. Nope. Don't tell me they found it. And a little bit later, I. It. And then a little bit later, we get off the bus and they go, so I hear something about Coach Steve's podcast. Somebody turns around, Coach Steve has a podcast. And I was like, here we go. Just... <laughs> what? Oh, man. And then all of a sudden, we're going back on the bus. Coach, don't worry. I gave you a rating on, on Apple. And I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> and then one of them was, I promise we'll, we'll wrap up. One of my episodes title was, uh, Nick Saban tampering. You know, they were talking about him tampering with like the transfer portal. So that was one of mine. And this is another, that, that day, this is how I saw the news. Some of, some of the, one of the kids goes, coach, I, I don't think Nick Saban tampered either. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and then all that at the very end of the season, when that happened, it was like second to last game or third to last game. And I said, as long as you guys are giving me views and listens, I could give a shit about what, what what's going to happen as long as that. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to hear all that cursing on this one. I guarantee it. Co Coach, you're, you're very, you have very colorful language, don't you? It's off season. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. I'm not on the clock. I'm not on the clock. But anyway, the clock. but anyway, thanks for coming back on. Everybody needs to check out USFL podcast, Inside the Walls podcast. The main podcast of Arena Football. You can there confidently you say that now. I can. I can say that. Can't can very that. much say it. Um, thanks for coming back on. Everybody out there, go check out his stuff. Uh, what's your Twitter? What Twitter? Yeah, I mean, uh, you want to? I mean, personal one, just Zach Kyleman. Uh, beat for the shows at USFL Podcast for the USFL Podcast. Then uh, at In Walls Pod again at In walls pod and that's both that's for all social media so yeah catch us for all that man um inside the walls drops right now in season three episodes a week wednesday through friday um and then usfl podcast uh every friday 9 a.m eastern time you can jump on youtube watch a premiere of the show find it on your favorite podcast platforms as well so have at it man you got all kinds of stuff from me you can watch yeah, I'll put or that, that all I'm involved with that you can watch. Let me say it that way. I'll put it all in the description for you. I'll, I'll type it all in there for you. I will go nice. the extra mile for you and type it in. And I just want you to know the hard work of us smaller people, not big time, us smaller people, what the hard work we do typing in the comments, Zach. I just want you to know that. I know. <laughs> I will not forget you. Anyway. I cannot forget you. Anyway, go check out that stuff. Thanks, people, for watching or listening. Uh, subscribe. I need the subscribers to go up that way. Please give this man, 
get this man a subscription and click the bell as well, man, because he he you want to keep up with all the stuff he posts. I don't know. I'm, I'm by myself. I need a co-host. Anyway, that's that's my problem. <laughs> Subscribers have to go up, rate it on Apple, all that good stuff. Zach, thanks for coming on. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. And just like Matt Nagy, we're leaving the station out of Chicago.